guys welcome to our channel it's me ursula thomas and jim thomas and welcome to jim and ursula tv so guys i'm so excited because this is our very first episode where we're really getting ready to start to delve off into some very important conversations about marriage because you already know if you don't know if you're a new subby and you're not familiar with us we uh wanted to start this channel because we wanted to be a uh voice for god the marriages and be the uh word of wisdom or knowledge or understanding or whatever we could share with you guys in our experience uh we have been married for 30 years we've been together for about 34 i believe uh 34 and a half something like that and so i feel like we got we got a little bit of experience and i just want you guys to really get the understanding that if the bible says that marriage is a good thing and if the bible say you find a wife and, and she's your good thing and then you obtain favor why do so many people feel like or they be begrudge marriage they just feel like it's just so hard and so the first thing i want to put out there and i'm gonna i'm gonna answer myself but the first thing i want to put out there is what were you guys concept what did you think marriage was and what did you think or believe was going to be about when either you ask your spouse to marry you or you accept the proposal of marriage what was your preconceived notion? Did you believe that it was going to be a fairy tale out of the book? Did you believe that marriage is automatically supposed to be hard work? Did you believe that she was going to be your ball and change? Did you, did you believe he was going to be your dictator? You know, what was your concept and what was you willing to accept when you said, I do? Now, with all that being said, I will start with me. When I... Uh, thought about marriage and I, I you know I can only speak on my behalf but when I thought about marriage you know when I was young I would always say I wonder who would I marry and you know what is he gonna be a, be like you know how is marriage going to be what is it gonna be about because in growing up I didn't have um, a two parents in the home because uh, my father lived in Mississippi and my mother lived uh, in Georgia and then she moved to Chicago. So we was in Chicago. So she was a single mother of four. So I didn't have the example of a marriage in the home. Uh, my mom, she raised us, you know, uh, did the best she could, you know, before she got killed. So after my mom got killed and I moved to Mississippi with my father, my father had already remarried uh, someone that previously had children. So I had to uh, come into a blended family. Well, in coming into a blended family, I really didn't get to see my father because he was a DJ. So he lived in another city uh, from Monday through Saturday night. So when we got up, uh, that Saturday or that Sunday I said that Sunday we would see him and then he would leave that Sunday night and go back to the city so they stay married like that for the duration of my time that I was with them uh, my stepmom and my father so I still didn't see an example of a healthy marriage but even then in my mindset I started kind of taking mental notes not even knowing that I was and so it was certain things I was like I don't want my husband to do that and I don't want my husband to do that and I don't want my husband to do that so when I came into the marriage I didn't come into the marriage uh, I don't feel like dictating you know you're gonna do this you're gonna do that I came into the marriage uh really free-minded because I was like you know I really don't know you know what we're supposed to be doing I just know that now we are married we're together um, you know I got to get to know you as far as living together you got to get to know me because you have to understand 
think about your brothers and sisters. You live in a house with your brothers and sisters. Y'all coming under the same house, the same rules, the same guidelines, and you can't get along. So living with somebody else that has a different set of rules, different set of guidelines, now y'all trying to come together and make it one sometimes can be really hard. But I just feel like that I was blessed in that area that I did not really have no preconceived notions. I just knew that I was going to be happy uh, in my adulthood life. And I just knew, I guess that would be my preconceived notion that if I did marry this person and it didn't work out, I wasn't going to be afraid to leave because I just knew that I was going to be happy. And if I felt like if this wasn't making me happy, then I wasn't going to, to stay. Uh, and that's not to say every day was a bed of roses, especially in the beginning, because like I said, you're learning one another. So I did have a mindset, I guess you could say, of wanting to be happy, but I wasn't looking to that individual to make me happy, if that makes sense. Uh, but we are all broken, you know, we are broken. So when you have two broken people coming together, you have to learn how to take those two broken parts, those two broken individuals, and put it together to make the puzzle of marriage whole. And you can only do that with Jesus. So, um, I don't know. I don't feel like I had any major preconcept ideas about marriage because I didn't really have an example. I just knew what I was and what I wasn't going to accept as far as my happiness um, or being mistreated or anything like that. So if it didn't have anything or didn't affect anything like that, then, you know, I was good to go. And plus, you know, I didn't go into it. Uh, I went into it loving, you know, my husband. And it's a difference between loving and in love. So I went into it, uh, you know, with my all, you know, I was like, okay, well, this is, you know, my husband, this is who God gave me. So I gave him my heart. I gave him my all. So I think that's one thing. If you're going to get into it, you got to be willing to get into it with a fullness of who you are. Uh, that still doesn't mean that we didn't uh, still have to grow and learn to even share even the more of ourselves you know you have to learn to share your vulnerabilities especially when you are a person that you reserve that for you because you don't want nobody to see your weakness or you don't want nobody to see your your hurt so you try to put on a mask and we have to learn how if we if this is our mate and this is who god has given us we have to learn how to release those vulnerabilities and release that mask so god will give him the ability to love you out of it and to love you through it. So that's my take. What's your take? Well, my my, my take uh, on that is that you know I grew up with my mom and my dad, and uh, as no country boy working out in the, out in the country, uh, chopping cotton and picking beans and doing all that stuff, I seen a man get up every morning and go to work, uh, even to the point on the weekend. Yeah, he used to drink and. Um, uh, and and provide for the family in those areas um, and that was my preconceived notion of how a marriage is supposed to operate uh, I've always seen my father come home and give my mom the money uh, I mean uh, of course there was a, a lot of, of, of craziness in there too uh, a lot of cussing and fussing and of course I had a big family and being the baby boy uh, out of the boys um, uh, looking up to my brothers and stuff then I start seeing different other examples so one thing that I uh, seen was this that I ha that had a mom and a father figure in the home and I always knew that I would actually be married and my concept of marriage was, uh, was hey guess what I'm gonna get married I'm gonna marry this woman I'm gonna work hard uh, she ain't gonna have to worry about um, paying the bills, she ain't got to worry about, guess what, uh, having food in the house. Uh, I'm going to be a provider to, uh, from that standpoint. But there's so much more that's built into marriage. 
Um, like my wife said, uh, said earlier, she said, when a man findeth the wife, he find a good thing. In a marriage, you got to always find yourself. And in the process of finding yourself, you got to redefine yourself. And your marriage can't be redefined on how it was with mom and dad. It can't be redefined on, on situations and circumstances that mom and dad went through. Because like, like he said earlier, you come into a marriage broken. You come into a marriage with preconceived ideas and preconceived concepts. Um, and we often, and we gonna eventually get into this, you come into marriage with preconceived vows, things that you said that you're gonna tolerate yeah. and you ain't gonna tolerate. Yeah. So therefore, when you come into a marriage and stuff, and a man's supposed to take his rightful place as headship, stewardship, now you fall under the umbrella of, hey, your husband, uh, how does that work? You know, how does that work? So, and that's a part of how two becomes one. And we're going to talk about that, how uh, different and different areas of stewardship, ownership, loyalty, honesty, uh, because the Bible tells the man to love his wife and for his wife to respect or honor the husband. So therefore, we're living in a time now where women have lost that respect for their husbands. Mm -hmm. And we as men, we got to be able to get that thing back. And the only way you can get that thing back is through Jesus Christ. Finding out what God says about you. And how do I get to the point of being that man of of, of, of honor, that man of distinction, that man of purpose. So how, and so therefore, guess what? I can really I understand and identify how two becomes one. So that's our episode today. Like I said, it's going to get much deeper because we really want to be transparent with you guys. We really want you guys to be able to see how God really can come into a marriage and he can bless it. And you can have a beautiful, successful, Amen. wonderful, godly marriage. Amen. And you don't have to feel like it's a burden. You don't have to feel like you've been weighed down. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to feel like that you've married the wrong somebody. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of times what the enemy does, he'll fool you. And he'll tell you that it's better on this side when it's not no better. I heard somebody say, the, they said the grass look green on the other side, but you got to know they use fertilizer. So you have to really get into God and really get into his word to really get a good understanding of what he wants to do and to find your place in your marriage. Now, Amen. that's not to say that guess what? You supposed to be in the kitchen and you supposed to I'm not saying that. I'm saying find your place cuz your place shifts in a marriage. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes God needs you to be the one to pull and then sometimes God needs you to be the one to push. Yeah. So you got to know what season are you mm. in? Am I in the nurturing season? I am in the the loving season. I'm in the push you forward season. I am the, the grab you into my bosom season. And so once you know the season cuz I'm gonna tell you, if God has put the push season in motion and you're pulling it's going to be conflict mm -hmm. because you're not grooving with God and what God wants you to do in that time in that period yeah. so like I said all we want you guys to do is be uplifted by this mm -hmm. channel to be encouraged by this channel and to Amen. know that marriage Amen. is still a good thing Amen. and when God word said that two become one, one he means it Amen. two can truly become, become one. one love you guys bye bye